<laughs> happiness, a skeptic's guide. This podcast aims to bring you happiness, whatever your objections. Coming up in this episode, we look at the many splendid thing called love. And please remember to show your love by liking, subscribing, telling your friends, family and lovers, and even the postman about this podcast. And without further ado, let me count the ways. Welcome back to Happiness a Skeptic's Guide with me, Gary Wood, and the perennial, I was going to say perennial pessimist, but I was going to, should have said perennial skeptic, <laughs> Mr. Paul Flower. A few episodes back, we did the mythical unhappiest day of the year, and in this podcast, we're going to do the mythical... Happiest. The happiest day of the year. The romantic day of the year, which might not be the happiest. There's an area there, I suppose, that's uh, ripe for exploration in that if you don't have a romantic partner of some kind, then Valentine's Day could be your Blue Monday equivalent. It could, it, but, and you know what I'm going to do now, don't you? I do. It could be an opportunity to set some goals. Oh, no, no more goals. Well, these could be your romantic goals, couldn't they? They could be your, yeah, okay, you're not happy with the situation you're in. What are your dating goals? What are your romantic goals? What do you want things to look like this time next year? You can do that letter to yourself and you can say, okay, this time next year, what advice is my next year romantic self giving to this year's romantic self? Do Says you... he neatly bringing in previous episodes. Well done. Um, I like a link to the past. Now, do you think, though, that romantic goals are a little trickier because they're not necessarily things... Some of these things are outside your control. Having or gaining a romantic partner or keeping a romantic partner might not necessarily be entirely within your control because another person is involved. Well, gaining is probably easier than keeping. So the gaining is how do you raise the possibility that you are going to meet a person? And the answer is to meet lots of people. So if you can put yourself in a situation where you meet lots of people, you're more likely to meet a partner. It, it's not a client. It was a friend. And he, he basically used to say, oh, I've got a problem meeting anyone. And I said, well, what, what are you doing? Where are you going? Oh, I'm not going out. And I had to say, well, sitting there watching your soap opera on the off chance somebody's going to poke the genitals through your letterbox is a bit of a long shot, isn't it? <laughs> you, need to, you, you need to go out. I'm just thinking those oh, spring-loaded no. uh, letterboxes might be a little yes, bit spring -loaded. Uh, tricky. Yes, spring-loaded. It, re it reminds me of when I used to work at a, a, a <laughs> research company. I don't know where this company. is going, but I am worried. A, I, a, re <laughs> a research company. And we, we did the monitoring for the mail, uh -huh. for the Royal Mail, especially the special delivery. And we yeah, had to That would be ask, a special delivery, yeah. Well, we had to ask whether they'd got an entry phone uh, or just a you know, normal front door. Because if they got an entry phone, they might not be able to sign for it. Anyway, I got a bit bored with it. So I inserted my own questions and I said, can your doorbell be audible uh, throughout the garden? But my favourite one is, and regarding your letterbox, are your flaps free swinging or spring loaded? <laughs> and I, I, I only wish, I oh only wish God. I'd made, I'd made that up, but I didn't. So. I, I've lost the thread now. Moving on. Sorry, yes, you, you were about to talk about, um, you know, romantic goals and, and gaining and keeping partners, I believe. So it could be, there is an argument to be said that, you know, in the old days of dating, when we were allowed to go to bars, the person that looks desperate, you look if you go there and you're looking, I'm going to meet some money, I'm going to meet some money, it's a repellent. Mm. Because people say, oh, dear me. You know, they imagine you've probably got a basement. and With lots of chains and uh, handcuffs. And they're, yeah. going, and they're going to end up Which in it. Which some people may like, but, you know, not everybody. With some, yeah, each to their own, uh, providing it's consensual. But there is something to be said for somebody who goes out and he's just having a good time. So if somebody's going out and just enjoying themselves and making friends, that actually is quite an attractive quality. So if you can just set aside the idea that you want to meet someone and just think, I'm going to have a nice night. I'm going to go out. I'm going to join a club. I'm going to do all the things that you do to be more sociable. And just practice social skills, you know, sort of asking about people, not just being totally wrapped up in yourself. Mm. Chat up lines, dreadful. Just ask somebody, what's your favourite pizza topping? It's not romantic, but it'll start a conversation. I don't like pizza. What kind of food do you like then? So, you know, once you get people talking about food, rather than these cheesy chat up lines, which are either going to connect 
or be so bad they make somebody laugh or they're going to think, oh, that person's an idiot. Mm. So perhaps if you set the goals, you know, when we've talked about, you know, you work out what your ultimate is and then you work out what the step before is. And the step yeah. before meeting the someone. Path, the path towards romance, yeah. Is meeting lots of people. Anyway, so, by, I, so if you meet, the more people you meet, the more chances you have to meet the special one. Yeah, it's, or two or three. There's a there's an actress, a Joanna Lumley. She went through a phase and she said she was known never for turning down an invitation. Because even if I wasn't necessarily interested in what was going on, there was bound to be somebody else there who was interesting or something else going on that was interesting. So I suppose the thing that the thing is now though, that there are so many more avenues to success in this. So your romantic goals may not be going out and looking like you're having fun or going out simply for the aim of having fun because the majority of your romantic entanglements uh, may be acquired online anyway. Yeah, but it's you can join things online. You can, you know, there's lots of you know learning languages. There's you know there's lots of Facebook groups. There's lots of meets. There's, there's loads of well, when we're allowed to meet up, I have to keep saying uh, there's meet up groups. So doing something that's not you know like a laser focus on I need to meet the perfect person, you probably won't. Hmm. It's one of those goals that you aim for with this laser precision. You tend to filter out all the things that might help you do it. So, so, it, it, so it's a goal, but you have to be a, a little bit less specific about actually aiming for it. You, you know, the way to the way to achieve this goal might be a little bit looser in that sense. Yeah, it's just do things actually are making you happier, connecting with other people, making you happier, and that is the the best way to actually beat somebody. Because happiness is attractive. Let's let's say it's an attractive personal trait. Yes, it is. You know, if you see somebody, you know, if you're in the company of someone who makes you laugh or makes you feel good about yourself, that's much more attractive than being, you can see a devastatingly handsome person. But if if they're so invested in themselves and they make themselves feel good by putting you down, they don't seem very attractive. The, The slightly less textbook attractive person who has got a good sense of humor slightly self-deprecating asks questions is interested in you he's not a total div that is much more attractive so i can see that anyway uh the reason we're doing this is because it was a requested episode from a listener so hopefully that's offered something and one of the things they mentioned was something to do with love so St. Valentine's Day is the time where we think about love, but we actually think about just romantic love. So I've, uh, there are, I've, I think, or oh, did I say there were six or there are eight? I haven't counted them. I think there are six. I should have counted them. You can do the counting. So if I'm... Okay, number one. Number one is eros. So that's the love of beauty, of physical love, of attraction. But we could extend that to maybe, a, a, you know, eros, a, a, a love of appreciation of any kind of beauty, like, you know, p- appreciation of an art gallery or, or you know, nature. But mm. the physical attraction is, de- is, the ero- is the Eros one. Then there's the one that's also been featured in many a film, and that's mania, and that's obsessive love, uh, and that's the clingy one. That doesn't sound like a healthy one, really. It, well, it's the one where, oh, I had sleepless nights, oh, my stomach's upset, and, you know, the slightest affection, you know, slightest sign of affection, you know, is is seized upon and causes almost ecstatic reactions. And then the slightest, you know, the slightest slight, I need to practice Susie, Susie. (laughs) The slightest slight causes, you know, despair. That's the kind of mania. It's more of a fragile love. And we've all been through that, maybe, that when we talk about having a crush. Yeah, mostly when you're younger, that's the kind of uh, love you experience, the mania. My favourite one is, it's number three, Ludos. And it's playing the game of love. Ah. And that, you know, because we hear about the game of love. And I think it's actually where the name, it, it, it is where the board game Ludo came from. Okay. The same r- linguistic root when you get all the, uh, you get all your tiddlywinks at the triangle bit at the end. <laughs> uh, but It's been so a long I time suppose, since I played Ludo. <laughs> I, oh, sorry, I wasn't talking about Ludo. <laughs> uh, fr- friends, friends with benefits, casual relationship, you know, and also. So the idea that we're basically just into connecting, you know, the idea that love is ludicrous. It's a much more free version. Okay. Then you get the the ones that are difficult to pronounce, and there's it's spelt storge. Storge. To me, that sounds like a steam pudding, but that's probably a whole new episode. <laughs> uh, 
It's Storge. <laughs> it's it, it's spelt S T O R G E. Storge. And that's a natural affection. And that's the one where we see where friends become lovers. And then when they split up, they still remain friends, you know, because you always hear that. Oh, can we can we remain friends when we split up? No. Uh, yes, of course we can. So, you know, if it's storge and it's developed over a period of time, it's po- possibly more likely that you're going to reconnect or say connected the classic brotherly love the the love of saints and martyrs is agape <laughs> so, yeah i don't even want to know how that's spelled so don't go there because uh, if you google that then you'll get something you really don't want agape uh, a-g-a-p-e yeah uh so that's the kind of that's the you know your love for all you know common all humankind so that's you know the the Buddhist kind of you know religious kind of spiritual love for everybody. Mm. You, you I think know, we're going to just... put up a specific link to this one. <laughs> Are we? Because I've never heard of that before. I've never heard of it a- called. You've a- never a- heard of a- 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 No, that's more the religious one. Uh, okay. And then there's pragma. Oh, can't beat a bit of pragma. I think I know uh, where that one's going. Well, it's more that it's, it's a bit like you know it, it's partnership. So it's kind of you know I get I'm guessing here that it's something akin to you've gone past the romantic stage and you're in the the stage where you know this is a partnership, me and you against the world. Pragma's just like exactly what it sounds practical, pragmatic, pragmatic. Yeah. So it's more business like. So on, when you when you see online dating and they link you all together and you say, oh, I'm interested in voles. Oh, I'm interested in you know toad hunting, whatever. I don't, obviously, been a long, obviously been a long time since I've been on online dating. Yeah. Loves toad hunting. So, pragma is when you know there is a match on almost on paper. You've yeah. got a lot of things in common. So, Scot- so Scottish peat farmers who you know are not surrounded by many uh, attractive male or females that they they might want to bring to the the highlands but they might post a, a lonely heart saying would you like to come and live in this fabulous uh, in these fabulous surroundings you know remote etc it's more about people who want to have a specific kind of life and are, are ready to forego other um, romantic elements in order to get that life yeah you made it sound awfully cold or yeah, you hope- really pragmatic yeah it is quite cold or you hope Hope. You know, I'm trying to imagine that online dating must like the smell of peat. Yeah. And then people go, who's peat, by Unlikely, the way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you can see, so that there are, when we talk about love, there are different types of love. So when we, I remember famously there was a singer called Pete Burns from Dead or Alive. And he, and he appeared on uh, Big Brother, uh, the celebrity version, and he was getting quite angry and ratty when people say they loved this and they you don't love that you just but there are he was missing the point there are different types of love mm-hmm. yes i'm guessing that your love for a i don't know a nice piece of gatto is not the same for your partner although you know my no, partner does be. my partner does come a good second to a nice slice of gatto i've got to <laughs> say right then Close so those second. are the I, Pleased so, to know that. Yes. So those are the uh, the different types of love. So it helps us kind of spot, is it mania? Is it is it the storge? It leads me on to Steinberg's triangular theory of love. And this is where we can start to link it with happiness. Mm-hmm. So the triangle is intimacy, passion, and commitment. So this probably starts to make more sense. Yeah, so that that's would that be the essentials? That's what you're really looking for yeah. from a romantic entanglement. And it's making the difference between so you often have people having makeup sex. Mm. We had an argument, we had makeup sex. And they often mistake that to be intimacy. Sex is intimacy. Sex can be the most unintimate thing imaginable. People make a lot of money from it, not not being very not intimate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, for some people, it's just functional. It's a release. So it's the idea that passion and intimacy are not the same thing. Mm. And then the the c word commitment uh, <laughs> for some people. So when we start to look at intimacy, it's probably what we're talking about is: do you actually like the person? And that may seem a really strange thing to say, but there are lots of relationships where you're thinking. Do you two really like each other? And it's almost like the battle mm. has become the issue. And that's where the you know, the emotions and the passion and the arguing, and that's that's fulfilling a function other than the intimacy. So if I just run down a few, the idea of intimacy, would you, you you promote each other's welfare? 
it would generate feelings of happiness. Uh, you'd hold your partner in high regard. You'd be able to count on your partner. You'd be understood by each other. You'd be able to share yourself and your possessions. Uh, you get emotional support. You give emotional support. You're able to communicate, especially about the intimate things. And you value generally your partner's presence in, in, in your life. So for some people, that might not, they might not tick all those boxes. There's lots of relationships that might be described as love hate relationships, yeah. the on off relationships, which don't necessarily fulfill that function of intimacy. You've gone very quiet. Yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering whether we're a little bit too in depth at the minute on this. Oh, do you? For a Valentine's Day episode, yes. <laughs> right. Well, let's go on to. Well, no, we, we didn't say it was going to be love and relationships. That's not. Well, yeah, okay, then. All you've got to do, success of a relationship is simple. Box a Cadbury's milk tray and a bunch of flowers from the garage. End of. <laughs> That's it. Okay. So, as, long so as, then, as, of, as long as they don't smell a. As long as they don't smell a petrol. <laughs> the chocolates. Unless all the you flowers, like the smell of petrol, of course. You know, because some people do. So I suppose when we think of Valentine's Day, we're thinking more about the passion, aren't we? We're thinking about the romance, the yeah. attraction, the desires, and all that kind of stuff. We're probably not thinking about commitment just yet. So when we're thinking about passion only. In, in, in terms of a kind of a love, it's that's more of an infatuation kind of phase. Yeah. If we're thinking about liking only, that's an intimate kind of thing where you're just liking the person. That's the idea that, you know, you, you get something from being with a the person, they get something from being from you. You value them, all the things I mentioned before, but you don't necessarily you say you're in love with them. I think the passion is probably where we say maybe that's where – is that where we say we're in love? I don't know. I've boxed myself into a corner here, haven't I? I'm afraid you have, yeah. So I, if I run down, liking is intimacy only. Infatuation yeah. is passion only. If you put intimacy and passion together, then that is what we call romantic love. So I suppose, yeah, I've answered my own question. That's more what we think about – Valentine's Day is intimacy, love, and wasting money. Sorry, spending money. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you're a big fan of some Valentine's. Well, it used to be with, with, Valent with Valentine's cards. You used to say it was from a secret admirer. Yeah. And you had to guess. And no, just everybody sends everybody Valentine's cards. Yeah, the, the point of these things is often lost. And, and certainly, as we were saying with Blue Monday, that you know something arises and becomes bigger than it initially was – just because of marketing and commercial gain, and that's never a necessarily a good thing. No, true. You mentioned earlier on about if if marriages kind of settle down, <laughs> it's kind of an intimacy and commitment. Yeah, and that's more what we call a companionate kind of love, mm -hmm. passion and commitment. That's basically you just committed to the thrill of it all, and that's referred to. I love this one. It's referred to as fatuous love. Isn't that great? <laughs> my, my, and there are not many, you think about the passion and commitment, there are not many songs with fatuous in the title, are there? No, it's not difficult to rhyme, that's why. I fatuously love you, yeah. <laughs> Call him me fat. But, but presumably so, inf infatuation comes from that, that's, that's yes, what that's all about. Yeah. Okay, then, and then there's when they all three come together, it's consummate love. So we talk about consummation and we often Indeed think we about do. as doing the deed. But the idea of consummate love is when intimacy, passion, and commitment all to come together. And my favorite one, and I don't know why this was included in uh, Dear Old Sternbergs, is if there's no intimacy and there's no passion and there's no commitment, it's referred to as, I want you to guess, a bit quicker so we don't have all this so dead you, air. No, no, we're going to be cutting that out. Don't worry about that. Um, Are we? No idea. <laughs> Non-love. Non-love. He really pushed the boat out for that one, didn't he? Yeah. Right. Intimacy seems to be linked to happiness then. No, I, t I tell you what is linked, linked to happiness, though, really, is the fact that if you have a long-term partner or a partner of any kind, you're likely to live longer. It would be a her horrible thing if you're living longer and being unhappy, but, you know, the road to living longer, proven by science, is that if you have significant others in your life. It's true, uh, but that effect is greater for men than for women. Than for women, but un so, yes, unsurprisingly. So both men and women in relationships tend to live longer than do single people. So now we've depressed everybody. Well yeah. done. <laughs> and they also tend to lose fewer days from work and see the doctor less often. 
But that effect is much more pronounced for men. There's yeah. a really, oh, 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 there's a study, it's on gender differences about the, oh, this sounds like a lovely note to end on. It's about um, gender differences on the will to live. So, you know, <laughs> okay, the will to live so, is a good one, yeah. So we studies have shown that the will to live, when, so, you know, the idea when we're faced with poor health and terminal conditions, do we still have the will to live? And women have a weaker desire to prolong life compared with men. Mm-hmm. And living with a partner, as you've said, is a significant predictor also of the will to live for men but not for women. Women just saying, take me, take me now, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who says that romance was dead? And on that note, we'll leave you this week uh, with those romantic thoughts and hope that you can prolong all the relationships that you have, romantic or otherwise. And don't forget, if you loved the program, uh-huh. <clears throat> to rate, review and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and share it with a friend. Things are always better shared. Apart from STDs. <laughs> <laughs> that was and is Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide with him, Paul Flower and me, Gary Wood. This time we were all loved up and next time we're very grateful. If you like this podcast, show us with a like, a review, a follow or just tell your friends. And if you've really enjoyed it, you can support the show at buymeacoffee.com forward slash skeptics guide.